Hey, get out of here, Moxie. I win. Alright. Yeah, yeah, that was a good fight. Got some money. Got a good win. Alright. Gotta go get something to drink. What are you guys doing? Oh! Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, I'm supposed to record that Cartman 1 review today. Uh... Yeah, yep. Well, I do want to get I do want to get started on those Cartman Shrek reviews now that they're over. Well, let's get started. All right. Okay, that was unnecessary. All right, whatever. All right. So before the review starts, here's this thing. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Because a lot of things do get spoiled in this review. If you guys don't want to get spoiled in this video for whatever it is that I'm talking about in this video, then I recommend that it's best that you guys just wait until you have seen whatever it is that I'll be reviewing in this video before watching said review video. Okay, so with all this being said, let's get started with the review. Hi there, you guys. This is Dragon Ball and Cartoon Fan 2004 here um, with yet another review video, and this will be my first time doing a spoof film review video in a while. Uh, the last time I did a spoof film review video was over a couple months ago and it was in the same room and it was when I reviewed the, the Return of the Fossa's Toy Story, the Fossa movies that he got out over a couple months ago. And uh, I'm doing yet another spoof film review. And yeah, this will also be a Sh another Shrek spoof film review and this will be my first time doing a Shrek spoof film review and over a few months since like New Year's Eve, if I remember correctly, when I did that Goku Shrek review. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, over three months, like over three months later, like over three or four months later, I'm doing yet another Shrek spoof film review. And uh, yeah, um, my next spoof film review video was going to be that review on Joseph's Toy Story spoof films, like, you know, on his first two Toy Story spoof films. But I got too lazy. You know, I was originally thinking of maybe doing that last weekend, but I got too, I got too lazy to do enough research on his Toy Story movies and, you know, for me to do, properly review them. So yeah, sorry, Joseph. I, I don't yet have the Toy Story, those Toy Story spoof film reviews out for you, buddy, but, uh, yeah, um, maybe I'll wait until you do the third movie and I can, like, review all three movies in one video, or, like, maybe, uh, maybe wait until after you get out Toy Story 4 and then I can do, like, a full Toy Story quadrilogy review video for you, buddy, <laughs> or even though, uh, crazy excited about your Toy Story 4 for obvious reasons, but, uh, yeah, so originally Joseph's, uh, my review on Joseph's Toy Story spoof films was supposed to come next, but, you know, change of plans. So, yeah, the Cartman Shrek reviews are going first. And in this video, I'm going to review Cartman 1. And then give Cartman 2 its own review video and review that next. Yeah, honestly, I would rather review both of these movies in one video. But Rabbit Lover wants me to give these two movies their own uh, their own review video. And, yeah, well, and yeah, and that, that's not a bad idea either. I can see why he'd want it to be like that. That is a good way to put it. Even though I prefer doing reviewing both movies in one video because you know i like doing multiple things in one video that's why that's like part of why part eight of shadow one will end up being over eight and a half minutes long at least but still th this is still a good way to do it. and uh yeah more information about the uh carbon shrek movies before i start reviewing them um okay so if you guys didn't know over a few months ago uh rabbit lover announced he was doing carbon shrek movies along with the two story remakes which he'll do soon but he hasn't done them yet but yeah he'll do them soon though he got a cast video out you got a couple cast videos out for them, like, you know, one for the canceled version and the other for the officially upcoming version. <laughs> it, but, yeah, um, that's beside the point anyway. Um, he was, yeah, so this year Rabbit Lover was supposed to do Carmen Shrek movies and the his two-story revival remake spoof films, you know, on different channels. But then, you know, he can't, on a different channel, but then he canceled that idea because, you know, he didn't feel like doing those uh, spoof film reviews for, you know, Carmen Shrek or his Toon Story remakes. So, yeah, he instead d did those projects in muted cast videos, but then he regretted, uh, you know, canceling those projects. So, yeah, he got back on to doing those projects of his. Like, you know, he's already done his Carmen Shrek movies. He hasn't done his Toon Story remake movies yet, but he'll do them soon. But, yeah, um, he got back on to doing his uh, spoof films. He even updated the cast to both of those uh, upcoming, you know, updated spoof films that he was supposed to get out. So, yeah, there were some casting choice changes in this uh, Cartman 1 project, which I'll be reviewing in this video. Heck, there was even some casting choice changes that happened. There was even a couple of casting choice changes that occurred after he got out the official cast video for the updated version of Cartman Shrek. <laughs> but, yeah, um, uh, 
Yeah, so I'm re- reviewing a project that was originally supposed to come out this year, but then it got canceled. But thankfully, it got revived, you know, with some updates to it. And yeah, I'll be reviewing Rabbit Lover's Cartman Shrek project. And this will be my first time reviewing a spoof film from uh, Rabbit Lover in a while since last summer of last year when I reviewed his medieval spoof films. And this time, I'm doing it again. like how I reviewed his Dookie Shrek movies. I'll be reviewing his Cartman Shrek movies. Both of them, I'm, I'm recording this video right now on a Friday, and I'll schedule it to come out tomorrow. And tomorrow, I plan on recording the Cartman Cartman 2 review and get that out on the same day. So yeah, you guys will get two, both Cartman Strike reviews on the same day. Um, yeah, let's hope nothing gets in the way, but I'm sure I'll be able to get the, both those out on the same day. But yeah, um, I wrote down a list that goes over the casting choices I'll go over in this video from Cartman 1. Uh, these It doesn't have all the casting choices on there because you know I didn't feel it'd be necessary to include all the casting choices on this list, but don't worry guys, I'll still go in depth well enough in this review to cover all the casting choices that I need to cover. And yeah, just because the casting choice isn't listed here, that does not mean I'll cover it. Although like the majority of the casting choices that I'll cover are listed here, it's <laughs> like probably the majority of them. And uh, yeah, um, I have these lists right here and I'll also cover some unique ideas and problems I have with this spoof film, yada yada yada. So with all this being said, let's get started with the Cartman 1 review, starting off by going over casting choices going over casting choices as usual. And as usual in my Shrek spoof film reviews, I'll start off with the casting choice for Shrek, because why not? He's the main character. Okay, so first up, you got Cartman, Eric Cartman from South Park is Shrek. What do I think about that? Well, it's not fitting at all. It's not <laughs> It's not fitting at all. Eric, I, okay, now, before I go more in depth with that, I do want to go more in depth with my opinion on South Park. Um, if you guys couldn't tell, because, you know, I don't talk about that much on my channel, I'm not really the biggest South Park fan. But I, I don't hate it, though. I don't hate it. I think South Park's a good enough show. I do think it's a really good show. It's pretty funny and whatnot. And, yeah, I did watch some of it growing up, and I even watched the, uh, I even, I've even seen the bigger, longer, and uncut movie back in uh, late 2020. And it was a really good movie. Pretty funny, especially at the first half. But I'm not as crazy yet about South Park as I am with other adult cartoons like King of the Hill or Hell of a Boss. But still, I, I, I think South Park's a really good show. It's an enjoyable enough show. I'm not as crazy about it as some other people are. But still, I, I like South Park, though. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, my older brother Jacob loves South Park. He's been watching it a lot, a lot off of Comedy Central. <laughs> and I've been watching a bit of it off of Comedy Central since we moved out of the apartment and whatnot. And, yeah, I do agree South Park's a really good show. Um, not good enough for me to want to put in my spoof films. But maybe, maybe I'll put in one of my spoof films one of these days. Anyway, as for the cat, yeah, there's a lot of South Park casting choices on here. So, yeah, I'll go over them. I won't go over all of them one by one because I don't want to repeat myself too much. But still, there's a bunch of South Park casting choices on here. Because, you know, Rabbit Lover's a big South Park fan. I can imagine South Park being his favorite show, like, at least apart from the ones that he, uh, apart from, like, the ten shows that he had listed uh, in his playlist on his, uh, you know, on one of his channels for his favorite shows. But, yeah, he's a big South Park fan, so that means there's many South Park casting choices in his cast, and one of them's Cartman or Shrek. And like I said before, it's not very fitting. But, yeah, it's not very fitting. Eric Cartman is too bratty, he's too, he's too childish to be Shrek, I mean... I, I liked it better, honestly, how he had him be Mr. Potato Head for his old Toon, Toon Story movies from last year, and how he had him be the Do the Roar Kid in his Dookie Forever After project. And even though I liked South Park more in Giant Test, I think we can all agree that Dookie is a... It was definitely more fitting how he originally had Dookie from Johnny Test be Shrek than Cartman. But to be honest, this casting choice was actually better than I thought it'd be. <laughs> I got more used to it. And yeah, I wouldn't exactly say it's a great casting choice, but still... I think it's an enjoyable enough casting choice, though. It may be like a bit of a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> yeah, because honestly, Carmen might be my favorite character in South Park. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know for sure. Uh, and speaking of uh, Carmen and Shrek, since you have a kid character as Shrek, <laughs> he obviously can't live in a swamp or in his house by himself, rather. So yeah, that means Rabbit Lover threw in his mom as an extra, Leon Cartman there as an extra, and there's like a bunch of unique... Uh, dialogue and ca- idea, u- unique dialogue ideas sh- he-, he did with uh, Leon Cartman. So, yeah, I'll go over those later on, but continue on with the casting choices. I do like the extra casting choice. The extra casting choices are cool. And there's another extra casting choice I'll go over later in this, later in this video. There's also Kenny from South Park as Donkey. And pretty much almost exactly the same as Cartman or Shrek. Not very fitting either, but still, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's good. Yeah, there's also Peach from the new Mario movie, Princess Peach from the new Mario movie as uh, Human Fiona. What do I think about that? 
Now, just so you guys know, have I seen the new Mario movie yet? I'm sorry. No. No, I haven't seen the new movie yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I really want to see it. I really want to see it. I'm seeing my the people I'm subscribed to. Like, like the people I'm subscribed to keep saying these, they've seen the movie. And, you know, they really like it. And I've seen I've even bumped into people who are doing spoof cast videos and whatnot for this new movie. And, yeah, I know. I really want to see it. But I'm sorry. My father doesn't want to see the movie. My older brother, Jacob, doesn't want to see the movie. My older brother, my older, older brother, Joshua, saw it. He saw it. But he saw it with his friends and whatnot. I don't know. I probably could have asked my older sister Samantha to take me out to see the movie, like she did with the Sonic, like she did with me and Josie with the Sonic live action Sonic the Hedgehog two movie from last year. But sorry guys, I haven't seen the new Mario movie. Although I did see clips of it off of YouTube, like not just from these Cartman Shrek movies, but also a bit of clips off of YouTube. And I can still say that I do really like how he has a how Rabbit Lover had Princess had Princess Peach be the human version of Fiona for this new Carmen Strike movies of his. Yeah, that's really good. Because, you know, I still really like Mario. I do love Mario. I grew up with some of the games and whatnot. And, yeah, as a Mario fan, I can say that I really like Princess Peach as human Fiona. I think it works really well. Yeah, and there's some more Mario casting choices that are in the series of his, but they're they're for Carmen too. so I'll wait until it gets Carmen 2 to go over those. Um, there's also Haiti... Right, there's also Haiti, sorry if I mispronounced that, but Haiti from South Park as Fiona Ogre. And, you know, I don't really see anything wrong with that since there's shipping going on in South Park between uh, her and Cartman. And, you know, so I don't repeat myself too much on these South Park casting choices. There's a bunch of South Park casting choices on here. And to make this quick, I think all of them work just fine, you know. As someone who thinks South Park's a good enough show but isn't a big fan of it, I don't mind any of the South Park casting choices, even though definitely not all of them are famous. So I think all the South Park casting choices work perfectly fine for, you know, what they are and uh yeah yeah they do work fine like not my uh like there's some casting choices from my other series that i prefer over the south park casting choices but still, i don't mind the south park casting choices at all i think they're good enough okay now continuing on okay now let's go over the casting choices casting choice for the angry mob guys at the beginning of shrek one and that's the, uh, the a bunch of johnny test characters as the angry mob and here's a fun fact guys um originally he was just gonna have johnny test villains be the angry mob but he changed it to having like you know Johnny Test characters like in general like probably like like a, the majority of the Johnny Test of the characters in Johnny Test except for like ones he had except for Johnny Test characters he used for other casting choices which I'll go over later on but yeah he had a bunch of Johnny Test Johnny Test characters as the angry mob like apart from a uh, like apart from the villains there was also Dookie and a uh, and a uh, Susan and whatnot he had a bunch of characters <laughs> but yeah it was like mostly villains though and yeah you got the Johnny Test characters as the angry mob and yeah. And yeah, that works fine. That works fine. Not the best Johnny Test casting choices from the uh, casting choice from the series, but still, I think it works fine enough. Yeah, he's also got uh, the seven dwarfs in the film as themselves, but it's not in the same way I have the seven dwarfs as themselves from my Shadow Shrek series. It's like you know, he has the uh, it's like this. He has the Snow White, the seven dwarfs, like you know, the original Snow White and the seven dwarfs versions of the seven dwarfs be the uh, seven dwarfs in here, and I think that it works pretty well. And yeah, okay. Now here's another extra casting choice. That yeah, the, here's another extra casting choice that I really want to go over. <laughs> and yeah, this is probably one of the things I was looking forward to talking about the most in this Cartman One review. Okay, so for Pinocchio, it's an extra casting choice. And yes, you guys, he has an extra casting choice for Pinocchio in his new Shrek. Like how I have an extra casting choice for Pinocchio for my new Shrek, and it's this. You got Bingo and Bluey as an extra from. Bluey as Pinocchio. What do I think about that? Now, to be honest with you guys, um, when when uh, when I saw that a uh, rabbit lover decide on the casting choice, I have not yet seen Bluey. But actually, last Friday night, last week, I did watch a bit of Bluey. Bluey off of Disney Channel, and yeah, I did make community posts sharing my opinion on it and whatnot, and you know about me watching it that night. And yeah, in case you guys haven't seen those community posts, here's what I think about Bluey. I think it's pretty good. From what I've seen of it, it's not great, but it's pretty good. It's a solid B for me. The problem I have with Bluey, though, is it just feels like a little too preschool friendly for me. I think that's what keeps it from being an A. But still, I, I enjoy Bluey. I, I like the animation style. I like the designs of the dogs and whatnot. It's good, and I, I'd say Bluey is a solid B tier. I might watch more of it to see, to give it, to, ch to judge it better, but for, so far from the bits I've seen of it last week, it's a B. But not bad, though. So, yeah, that's why I don't mind this casting choice with being going bluey as Pinocchio. <laughs> I think it works well. And, yeah, there's a unique idea he had with a... He, there's a unique idea he used with a being going bluey as Pinocchio. And, you know, even though... And, yeah, I could cover it later, but I really want to cover it right now. Okay. 
So, yeah, so do you guys remember how in part two of my Shadow 1, Shrek 1, Movie Spoo Project, how, you know, I had Gumball and Darwin from The Amazing World of Gumball both be Pinocchio, you know, with Darwin being Pinocchio and with Gumball being the extra, and, you know, how I added dialogue to so I could have, like, you know, both Gumball and Darwin be sold away? Well, Rabbit Lover did that similar type of idea with Bingo and Bluey, and the added dialogue he used to get them sold away is very similar to the added dialogue I did I did to get Gummo and Darwin sold away for my new Shrek. So yeah, I really liked that. I was chuckling. I remember when I was first uh, listening to that part of his Carmen One project, I was chuckling pretty hard at how, how accurate the dialogue to the dialogue, the dialogue was of that part to like you know how it is in Shadow One when Gumball and Darwin get sold away <laughs> by Master Roshi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh man. Oh man, I wonder if this extra casting choice for Pinocchio was heavily inspired by my extra casting choice for Pinocchio. Oh I have Gumball and Darwin as Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah, I do really like the added casting choice the added dialogue idea he did for that extra casting choice. Although there's one problem I have with that added dialogue scene though. And that's the fact that Bingo and Bluey are sold away by Discord from My Little Pony. Friendship is fucking magic as Geppetto. That scene would probably be a 9 or... That scene would probably be like a 9 or 10 out of 10 for me if it weren't for that. And yes, guys, as usual, because, you know, Rabbit Lover loves to suck off My Little Pony in his spoof films, he, of course, has My Little Pony in this... Carmen Shrek series of his. Like, he didn't have any in the cast video, in the updated cast video, but he does have a good chunk of My Little Pony cast and choices in this Carmen Shrek series of his. And yeah, Discord from Discord being Geppetto is not the only one. If you want to find out what the other My Little Pony cast and choices from Carmen 1 are, go watch the project yourself or, like, go read the cast or something because I'm not going over all of them one by one. I'm just going to say it right now. Any My Little Pony cast and choice in this Carmen 1 project of his sucks. Sucks. Sucks, and I'll say the same thing with Cartman too. Sucks. Don't care who, what character's playing it. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care how fitting it is. Don't care. Sucks. Moving on. Okay, so all the South Park casting and choices and the My Little Pony casting and choices are checked off. So, yeah, okay. Uh, but continuing on, though, there's still a good chunk of casting and choices left to cover. And I just crumpled up the paper a little bit, but it's fine. I can still read the paper fine. Uh, continuing on with the casting choices from that scene, that, you know, flying, talking, donkey scene. Where they're all at the like you know the fairy tale roundup. Okay, so uh, now let me specifically go over the casting choices for uh for Quads Guards. Okay, so you got Scott Scott from South Park being uh the captain of the guards, which I already covered before since I've already covered every single South Park casting choice that's in this car. Excuse me, that's in this Cartman One project of his. Now let me go over the, the casting choice for the guy who breaks the broom, for the guy who breaks the broom and says that the witch's flying days are over. You got a medieval villain from the 2019 version of Medieval Be the Brew Breaker. And yeah, I think that works out well. Seems fitting enough. And yeah, there's also a Hugh Tess from Johnny Tess as the guy, as the guy who like tortures the elf and whatnot in like the background. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. That is pretty fitting. But uh, yeah, honestly, I originally thought he had him be the guy uh, be the guy who sells the witch. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But then, you know, I, I saw the credits and I saw that, you know, he... He had him be the elf torturer, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's also a uh, Junior Asparagus from VeggieTales as Baby Bear. Yeah, I think that works perfectly fine. And you also got Junior's parents as uh, the Baby Bear's parents, you know, Mama Bear and Papa Bear. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. Um, all right, now I think I'm done with the casting choices for that scene. Uh, okay, so next up, uh, I want to cover a princess casting choice, and that is for Snow White. So for Snow White, you got Princess Clara or Clara, whatever the hell her name is, from Drawn Together, Drawn Together, as uh, Snow White. And what do I think about that? Don't really have an opinion on it. I have never seen Drawn Together. I I know I've heard of Drawn Together. I've heard a lot about it. Like I know, like I know, like I kind of know what it's about and whatnot. You know, I know it's like a really gory and violent show that like crosses over characters from a bunch of different series, and it got its own movie. But I've never seen Drawn Together. Uh, yeah, do I have any interest in watching it? Eh, I don't really have much interest in watching Drawn Together. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It does look pretty good, but it doesn't look like a show. It doesn't really look too much like a show I'd fall in love with. But if I had to watch it, though, I wouldn't mind, even though it's a really violent show. But eh, I can kind of handle that. But yeah, don't have a casting choice for that Drawn Together cast. Don't have an opinion on that Drawn Together casting choice, I mean. Now, what other casting choices is there to go over? 
Oh, the Duloc mascot. <laughs> the, 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 okay, I really like the cast choice he did for the Duloc mascot in Shrek 1. And yeah, by the way, speaking of that Duloc mascot, um, if you guys don't remember in his Dookie 1 project, he actually originally cut out that scene with the Duloc mascot, you know, where uh, Shrek accidentally scares the Duloc mascot. And, you know, the Duloc mascot accidentally knocks himself out trying to get through, you know, trying to get inside Duloc and whatnot. Yeah, that funny scene was cut out in his Dookie 1 project. Oh, and I'm so mad at him for doing that. Uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I don't, I'm not mad at him because, come on. I did the same thing for my Vegeta 1 Shrek 1 movie super project. You know, both versions of them. Both the original version and the updated version from over two years ago. <laughs> yeah, but still. Uh, still, now looking back, that is kind of annoying to see that funny scene get cut out in a lot of these Shrek spoof films. But, hey, I cut it out because, you know, I saw a lot of these other guys were cut it out. And, you know, I got lazy. Yes, and Rabbit Lover cut out the scene of his Dookie 1 for the same reason. But fortunately, he did not cut out the scene in his Carmen 1 project. No, he left the scene in, and he even had a casting choice. for. He even had some character be uh, the Duloc mascot instead of having him be himself. And this character is another one of my favorite SML characters, and he's like the younger brother of my favorite SML character, the Brooklyn T guy, and that's Jonathan from Super Mario Logan as the Duloc mascot. And I think that's a pretty funny casting choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like Jonathan. He's a pretty funny character. You know, the funny younger brother of a, the, of a Brooklyn Tea guy. Oh, she did? That's my favorite boy feed. <laughs> that's a quote from uh, the body switching movie where he switched bodies with the Brooklyn Tea guy. Yeah, I really like Jonathan. He's yet another one of my favorite SML characters. And, uh, yeah, seeing him be the Duloc mascot is pretty funny. It's pretty funny having Cartman scare him off on accident and whatnot. Great stuff. Great stuff. Love it. <laughs> Love it. It might be, I don't know, it might be my favorite SML casting choice from, uh, Rabbit Lover Spoof Films, but, man, that's a bit much. He's, the Duloc mascot's really only in two scenes, so... Yeah, probably not, looking back. But still, I still love that casting choice, though. <laughs> He's a great choice for, uh, the Duloc mascot. Okay. Uh, what else is there to go over? Oh! Oh, yeah. Uh, I almost forgot the casting choice. Oh, how could I almost forget the casting choices for Farquaad in Dragon? Okay, so the casting choice for Farquaad, you got Oogie Boogie from uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas as Lord Farquaad. And what do I think about that? Really solid casting choice. Uh, if you guys want to know my opinion on The Nightmare Before Christmas, I saw it off of YouTube. I don't remember watching it as a little kid, but I saw it off of YouTube in late in December of 2020 during the Christmas season, you know, off a of YouTube playlist and high quality. And I really like it. It's a really good, it's a really good movie. That's not just a Christmas movie, but also Halloween too. Like crosses over Halloween and Christmas. And that's one, probably one of my favorite things about the movie. You know, it's really good. And I think it gets even better at the second half than it does at the first half. And yeah, I do really like the nightmare before Christmas. And yeah. Oogie Boogie is not a half bad villain and he's not a half bad choice for Lord Farquaad. Very good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, Rabbit Lover told me one time on a live stream that he thinks Oogie Boogie would be his favorite Nightmare Before Christmas character, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good choice for a favorite character. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorites. Though I can't imagine my favorite character being Jack Skellington himself. Okay, continuing on. Now the casting choice for Dragon. You got Maria from uh, Grace Face as Dragon. What do I think about that? Yeah, like I said before, I don't really have much of an opinion on Brace Face, and I forgot to watch a bit of it before I did this review. Oh well, at least I watched Bluey before doing this review. I might watch a bit more of it before I do the uh, Toon Story, uh, before I do any of those Toon Story revival spoof films review. Because <laughs> yeah, that will uh, focus a lot more on Bluey than the Carmen Shrek movies. Those movies will focus a lot more on Bluey than the Carmen Shrek movies did. I'm I I am thinking maybe watching more of it, but there is that problem I have with Bluey about it being too, feeling too preschool friendly for me. Though I guess you could argue that I really should have expected better since I watched off of Disney Junior. <laughs> but yeah, as for Maria's Dragon, don't really have much an opinion on that. Don't know much about Brace Face. Like I've seen like barely even anything of it, so don't know too much about that. Although there is some cool, there is a really cool unique idea that he did with the. There's some cool unique stuff he did with the uh, Maria being Dragon. I'll go over those later on. Um. Okay, next I want to ca talk about the casting choice for the Merry Men. Okay, the casting choice for Robin Hood is yet another South Park character. And like I said before, I've already uh, covered my opinion on all the South Park casting choices in this Carbon 1 project of his. But as for the Merry Men, let me go over the casting choice for the Merry Men. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. He didn't bother to show the casting choice for Robin Hood's Merry Men. Yeah, that's one of the problems I had with this Cartman 1 project. Like, I was looking forward to seeing who he would have be the other Merry Men, be a Robin Hood's Merry Men for his Cartman 1 project. But, sadly, no. He didn't 
have uh, any he didn't have to be anyone be the other merry man which i found pretty disappointing he didn't even have anyone for the guy who says oh you little which i found kind of disappointing yeah 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 i found that pretty disappointing how i did that and again, another casting choice. Uh, yeah, another disappointing thing that uh, before I continue on with the casting choices, another disappointing thing that I found out from uh, part eleven of this project was how he cut out the scene where uh, Cartman, uh, where uh, he cut out the scene in Trek One where Fiona sings, goes out to get breakfast, and blows up the bird on accident and whatnot. And yeah, so yeah, that means there's a big jump, jump cut from that scene where uh, Oogie Boogie's in bed and whatnot in his bedroom. To like you know, and then the next scene is like you know Princess Peach cooking up eggs for Cartman and Kenny, and uh, yeah, yeah, didn't really, yeah, didn't really like that. Although yeah, speaking of that uh, bed scene though, um, yeah, so you guys remember how in the uh, how in House of Misfits is Simba Strike Project how they added in um, the uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame song scene for that scene where Farquaad's in bed. Well, Rabbit Lover did the same thing, did the same type of thing with that scene in his Carbon One project, where he added in a uh, you know Oogie, an Oogie Boogie song scene for that bed scene, for that scene where Farquaad's in bed. And I did really like that. <laughs> that was really nice and well done. And I remember your animated eighteen doing a similar type of thing for his old Jack Shrek project from over five years ago. <laughs> yeah, very nice and well done, unique idea there. But yeah, let's get sidetracked. Let's get back on to the casting choices. And there's not the main left. Um, next up is the casting choice for. Uh, the priest, and that's Reverend from uh, Moral Oral as the priest. What do I think about that? I don't really have much of an opinion on Moral Oral. Not that I've never seen it before. I do remember watching a bit of it off Adult Swim, and I do remember being okay. So at least this isn't a casting choice from something I hate. But yeah, it still seems pretty fitting, though, since you know it's a priest character playing another priest character. Um, yeah, but although he was actually going to have it be uh, the teacher from South Park be the priest and yet yeah, honestly that probably would have been better but still i don't mind the uh the reverend from moral oral be uh, being the priest here that still works fine and uh is that about it for, for casting choices i think i think that's about it so uh, i'll just rip it up put it in my pocket and i'll throw it in the trash later okay um, now, what are, now, there's some more problems I want to go over with this Cartman 1 project of his, even though I still like this project, and I'll give an over, give it an overall score later on, like, you know, at the end of the review, but there's another problem that I had with this Cartman 1 project of his, and it's a big one, like, but to be fair, I'm sure this wasn't intentional, but yeah, it's a big one, and this kind of does affect the enjoyment of his Cartman Shrek series for me, and that's the part, okay, so here's the thing, guys, um, some parts of his Cartman 1 project were pretty long. Like, you know, that's why he did this project in only uh, 17 parts. And some parts were pretty long. Like, for example, he did the same over eight and a half minute type of long type of part that I'm going to do for my Shadow 1 project, where it covers the whole thing with all of them being in the Dragon's Keep and whatnot. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, he did do that long part. And, yeah, he did other long parts like that. <laughs> but the problem with that is. Some parts got so long to the point where the audio got out of sync with the visuals, with the screen, with the camera. And yeah, the audio get, gets out of sync at certain parts because, you know, some parts are so long and, you know, it has a bunch of pausing on his phone when he's recording and whatnot. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that does affect a good chunk of the enjoyment for me. Yeah, that is a pretty big problem for me. And that's definitely one of the biggest problems I have with this Cartman Shrek series of his. Like, not that I blame you, Rabbit Lover. I'm sure you didn't do it on purpose. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. But, you know, that's still a big problem I have with this Cartman Shrek series of his. You know, I gotta be honest. Gotta be honest. That is a pretty big problem. Though, I don't blame you. It reminds me, like, back when uh, um, back when I used my parents' phones because, you know, I didn't properly have a phone that I would use that I would use on my own on a normal basis like I do now. <laughs> I haven't had to use my parents' phones in over... I haven't had to use, like, either of my parents' phones in years now. But, so, I remember back when... Uh, I remember back when I'd use my mom's phone a lot... I, back when I used my mom's phone a lot, you know, I would record videos off of it because, you know, her camera had a pause, had an option to pause the recording while you're recording it on, like, you know, my other, my type of phones had. <laughs> and, yeah, it took me a while to finally have a type of phone that would do that. And, yeah, there were certain recordings I made or the recording where I'd press pause so much on the recording to the point where, you know, the audio would get out of sync with the visuals and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's what reminds me a lot of that. So, and, yeah, of course, I didn't, like, mean to do it. Uh, of course, like, at least probably a lot of the time I didn't mean to do it on purpose. So, yeah, I don't blame uh, Rabbit Lover for having this problem. Again, I know it, I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but still, it's still a big problem. 
And yeah, sorry, it does affect a good chunk. It, again, it does affect, affect a good chunk of the enjoyment I have with this Carbon Strike series of his. Also, another problem I have with this Carbon Strike project of his is, uh, okay, now, now let me be more specific with the casting choice for, uh, armor strike even though it's yet another south park casting choice but for armor strike he put cartman in this coon costume like you know in his superhero raccoon costume they were at times in south park and i do really like the idea the problem i have with that casting choice though is when he starts showing it and i kid you not he literally waits like you know how in the film shrek like you know puts on the stuff shrek puts on the armor he puts on the armor like as he's talking to donkey about like you know where the princess is upstairs in her room and whatnot yeah he didn't start to show you know raccoon cartman at that part instead he decided to start showing that casting choice i kid you not literally right at the scene where shrek gets up in fiona's bedroom this is easily one of my one of my least favorite things about shrek's boot films like, seriously, why do a lot of these Rex Proof films wait until literally the that exact moment to start showing their casting choice for Armor Shrek? I'd rather have no... I'd rather do nothing for Armor Shrek than have to start to show the casting choice for Armor Shrek at that point. Like, seriously, it's so annoying. It's like, oh my god, have you guys been paying enough attention to a movie? You're supposed to start, start showing the casting choice for Armor Shrek when Shrek talks to Donkey about the princess being upstairs and stuff. Not when he gets up in Fiona's bedroom. If it was like that in the movie, then Fiona should have already seen Shrek, you know, without what Shrek looks like, what Shrek's face looks like, without the, uh, you, you know, before he's supposed to remove the helmet and whatnot. I mean, sure, he, she, she probably wouldn't have gotten that. He, she, he, she probably wouldn't be able to again get that long of a look of it that good look of it but i'm sure she would have caught a glimpse of it which would tell her that hey this is an ogre rescuing me you know way before you know way before she gets in position for shrek to rescue her and whatnot so you said why do a lot of these shrek spoof films do that why that's such a dumb way of doing it yeah his dookie one project had the same problem too and yeah i should have covered that problem when i did the dookie one review oh seriously why do shrek spoof films do that it's so annoying i promise you guys that i won't do that for my shadow one project but yeah but yeah you guys won't see me do that in part a of my shadow one project but yeah like seriously why do a lot of these shrek spoof films do that well okay i take that back maybe it's an exaggeration to say why a lot of these shrek spoof films do that because i'm sure these other guys do it because you know originally house of misfits did it and you know that led to a cycle of a bunch of other people doing it so i'm sure rabbit lover only did it for his shrek one projects because you know he saw other guys doing it so yeah he was trying to copy he was trying to copy them and whatnot but yeah, I'm sure if he knew about the problem now, he wouldn't uh, have done that if he was making Carbon 1 right now. But hey, he already made Carbon 1. You know, he finished up his Carbon Shrek series and uh, yeah, he's not going to go back and remake it. Oh well, oh well. At least it, well, it was cool. It was still cool that he at least managed to do something different for a uh, you know armor shrek you know be able to differentiate between the normal cartman and the uh, raccoon cartman like like you know having cartman dress up in his raccoon costume and whatnot that's still cool but just the time where it comes up is so so it, it's like it's so dumb even though he did use a really fitting clip for like when cartman like land for one shrek he did use a really fitting clip of cartman like you know when shrek uh, accidentally falls into a when shrek plummets into fiona's room Still does not excuse this big problem that I have with this movie of his. <sighs> and I think I've already covered a good chunk of the negatives I have with Cartman 1. Now, now let's go over, like, more, I want to go more in depth with, like, you know, the unique ideas, you know, the stuff I like about this Cartman 1 project of his. Okay, so, yeah, there were some pretty cool added dialogue, added dialogue ideas he did for, uh, for Cartman 1 this project. Like, another example was, like, you know, since he had Cartman's mom, Leanne and Cartman, it, like, since he had Cartman's mom, Leanne be an extra for Cartman, <laughs> you know have it be his mom and whatnot she did he did a, a, throw in a bunch of extra scenes and extra dialogue with her as carmen's mom and whatnot like you know like there was an added scene at the end of part one after carmen scares off the johnny test characters where carmen comes home and sees his mother and whatnot <laughs> talks about like you know what food he wants about you know how he's being made fun for being fat and whatnot <laughs> yeah that cool example like that and uh yeah also another example of like unique ideas was like okay so yeah um like i said before he has maria from brace face as dragon and yeah silly me was thinking that you know ken kenny and carmen were gonna ride on a maria's normal sized body to the wedding but nope instead uh Luyen offers to drive cartman uh, to drive you know cartman and the gang to the wedding so you know to canada which by the way he used as a substitute for duloc which i liked <laughs> 
Yeah, he drove them to Canada. She drove them to Canada to stop the wedding, which I like. Because, come on, how can Cartman and Kenny possibly my, ride Maria? Yeah, how? Even in a cartoony spoof, how could that be possible? <laughs> yeah, and uh, another unique idea I liked was uh, how... Okay, again, he did again. He did have Maria from Brace Face Be Dragon. And obviously, how could Maria possibly eat Oogie Boogie? So, yeah, what do you do as a substitute instead of having Oogie Boogie get eaten by Maria? Have Oogie Boogie suffer a similar type of demise he did in the Nightmare Before Christmas movie. <laughs> nice and well done. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had a dialogue idea like that he did it with Cartman 1, with that wedding scene. Cartman 1 was how he had one of his stuff, how he had one of his stuffed animals come in. And tell them, <laughs> telling the guests to get back and how they're not allowed to trespass and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, some cool added dialogue ideas with that, and uh, some cool added dialogue ideas with this project and whatnot. I think I've covered a good chunk of them. You know, some cool unique ideas, some cool substitutes and replacement of stuff that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, and all a bunch of good casting choices. I think I'm good enough to jump into conclusion. So, uh, but yeah, um, how good is the pro oh, b before I do that though? How good is the project quality wise? Well, the quality of the spoof films have gone up a bit since, you know, he stopped doing spoof films on his, uh, on his other channel. I mean, yeah, they're still not the best quality, but still, they've improved a bit. Like, you know, he has gotten better, a bit better with the U-Cut app, with, you know, with some editing and whatnot. He can now change the color scheme of the screen for his videos, and, you know, like, he can now change the color screen, scheme of the screen and for his videos and whatnot, like, draw and photos and whatnot. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool that he can do that now. He's getting better. He's getting better with his video making and whatnot. Yeah, he still, he still could approve a lot more, to be fair. But still, he's getting better. He's getting better, and it's cool. Yeah, it's cool to see him get better. It's cool to see YouTubers improve with the quality of their videos. Yeah, how good is it syncing-wise? Like, yeah, not the best syncing-wise, but it could be worse. Could be worse. Now, I think I'm good enough to jump into conclusion. How much do I like Cartman 1? Well, it definitely has its flaws with all the My Little Pony stuff, the, uh, you know, the, some, the bird scene yes. being cut out, the, um, a raccoon Cartman showing up at the, starting to show up at the wrong time and certain parts being out of sync and whatnot. But still, I still think Cartman 1's a really good movie. I still think Cartman 1's a really good movie. It's a nice step up from uh, his Dookie Shrek movies. It, it, like, probably mainly because they don't focus as much on My Little Pony and whatnot that's cool like how you have princess peach as human fiona for this project how you have princess peach for human fiona for this project this time instead of a my little pony character have a my little pony character be her massive massive upgrade for me and yeah what's my favorite casting choice from carbon one i'm not entirely sure but uh i don't know maybe though maybe princess peach as human fiona because i do really like that casting choice he did with that princess peach as a uh, human fiona although he didn't really show a lot of footage of her although it's excusable for him to use the same shots and clips of her over and over again since yeah the mario movie hasn't been out on a dvd a dvd yet so yeah he has to rely on pictures and you know youtube clips uh, illegal youtube clips to you know get good footage of peach and along with the other two mario cast and joyces that'll go over in the carmen 2 review and yeah also it would have been nice to see uh some see him use more clips and shots of the characters and one uh, especially with characters you get playing free time to be the character the characters they play but whatever i'm not too surprised they did that that he's done that in this new shrek series of his but yeah still despite its flaws despite the flaws i have listed with this carbon shrek series of his i still think carbon one is a really good movie and a nice solid start to the carbon shrek series how do i rate it on a scale of one to ten hmm, that out of sync problem would probably lower it down a bit at least to seven if not, maybe like a low eight, a low eight, like a like a, maybe like either a B plus tier or an A minus tier. Either way, it's still a really good film. There's some negatives about it that do tone it down, but I still like Carbon One, and I do go plan going back to it and whatnot. Yeah, it'll be cool. Now next up, there's Cartman Two, Shrek Two, which I'll record the review for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to watch. Uh, Rabbit Lover's Carbon Shrek series. A link to a playlist I made of both of his Carbon Shrek movies will be down in the description below. Yeah, you guys can look forward to uh, uh, Carbon 2 coming next for my spoof film reviews and whatnot. Yeah, you guys can tell me in the comment section down below what you think of Rabbit Lover's new Carbon Shrek series. Uh, maybe which, which movie you like more between Carbon 1 and Carbon 2 and what you think of the review and whatnot. So yeah, with all this being said, that's my first spoof film review in a little while and over a couple months. And yeah, with all this, yeah, hopefully this will be enough to satisfy you for my Carbon 1 review rabbit lover and with all this being said that's all for this video you guys bye everyone and thank you all for watching this video